April 13th, 2023. Welcome, new Christians. Welcome, new members of South Central Church of Christ. And certainly a refresher for those who have been with a congregation and every now and then needs to be reminded of the basics. I am pastor. I am Brother Michael L. Dublin Sr. I have been leading this congregation uh, for about 38 years. During this time, I have learned quite a bit and that's a part of the journey. And I want to make your opportunity, your time, however long that time is. And I don't want to say short, but sometimes people get job opportunities and they leave. And other times people uh, come and go. And then there's a core church that has been with us and stayed through it all. To my right, 1.1 more acres belongs to us. So from what you see here where this row of hedges is to the right belongs to South Central. We have not developed it yet, but our goal is to actually utilize that for expansion when God gives us the okay. Initially, we wanted to put a prayer garden there and we have not changed our minds about the possibility of putting a prayer garden. But that was a part of also another plan that we had that would expand on both sides. After we purchased this land, we weren't able to purchase the rest of the land. So at that time, um, the land on the other side of us, on the other side of our parking lot, became available and we just simply couldn't purchase it. And now, oh, about a year ago, uh, that land was purchased and uh, there's no way we could have paid what they paid for it because uh, it was astronomical what they paid. And probably uh, they're going to develop it with housing as they have done uh, throughout the gentrification process uh, in Wake County. But that does not change our plans uh, totally. It does change our plans as far as what's available to us uh, to be able to do. Since we can't go on the other side, then we would have to use this 1.2 acres along with uh, what we have here. Now, we are dedicated to this site as long as it serves our purpose. But who knows, with the gentrification, somebody might come in and offer us a ton of money that will allow us to build uh, at another site and still have a significant budget. Now, we're, we're not looking to do that. That is not our first objective. But I'm always wanting to be open with the congregation so that we'll know that there are always possibilities. We don't get satisfied. We don't get stagnant. We have to look at whatever options we have. So let's go inside now. Um, I leave the door locked, so I still had the key in it. All of you by now are familiar with uh, the entrance. We normally would ask you every Sunday to Please pick up your communion packet. Now, after the communion packet, we will take up the collection, the offering. Uh, some call it tithing. Whatever you call it, this is a part of every particular, every Sunday. We do take the communion because in the New Testament, when the church was established, on the first day of the week, they gather together to break bread. And that's the example that we have. Also, uh, they gave of their offerings. And so we follow that every Sunday. 
we give of our offerings and we begin the process of developing the church and the congregation and fortifying everything that we need to do every Sunday. Do you know the building? If you've been in it, you know this is our tech room. There's two sides to the tech room because the electrical room is in there. and We always leave this open so the tech people can hear what's going on and see what's going on. The downside is the members by nature walk by there and talk to them even when they're trying their best to concentrate on the task at hand. So sometimes they'll just say, Brother Dublin, pray for us because people will come and stand in the in the doorway there and talk to them. That's usually not uh, the new members doing that. It's just that we are familiar with each other and glad to see each other. We don't give a whole lot of thought that the person is on duty doing a task, but uh, we have to get better about that. It's good when somebody loves you enough, cares enough to actually stop by and disrupt you. Uh, we'd rather have that problem than to have the problem of uh, nobody caring and not speaking to you at all. This is the room that we prepare people for baptisms. So one of the things as a new member, you may have just gone through that experience. Uh, we did not intend to have vacuum cleaners and other things in here, but as life goes, <laughs> Those things happen sometimes. So we really want to utilize every bit of the space. We started with a portable baptistry, and it makes a lot of noise, so I just cut it off. Eventually, we're going to replace this with a larger baptistry because we actually need a larger baptistry. For the little bit of money we count, this is where we do it now that we're online, the bulk of our money comes in online. For us, we wouldn't mind all of it uh, coming online. But when well, you have visitors and you have other people who choose to give and, and give the traditional way, which is to uh, give cash and, and check. So we'll accept whatever they have and whatever mechanism that they have. Uh, this is the view from up here. Uh, it doesn't have the faces, but we've done a lot of work. It wasn't too long ago, within the last year, that we've had the lights put in the ceiling. We've had the four televisions added. We were using a screen uh, for PowerPoint to come above us, but we put in new speakers as well. So to meet the needs of the congregation, to meet the online needs, we I had to spend about $25,000 upgrading uh, for the needs. I mean, you know, I could kind of stumble around, but that's really what it was. And, of course, this is uh, my office. This is the place where I study. This is the place where I cry. The place where I take a nap and, and study and cry and take a nap and go back over um, the, the issues and the things that we deal with uh, here and have dealt with here. And, and so it's just a, um, uh, my office has a lot of memories and a lot of, um, uh, just a lot of memories, a lot of memories. So being Trying to let you see some stuff without the reflection. But here is where I, I do the work that I do. And uh, this is where I counsel um, uh, some individual meetings that are just simply meetings and not counseling. But this is my little spot where I, I try to find peace and deal with the issues Uh that has to be dealt with. And when you're a pastor in a church, there are always issues, issues upon issues. And those issues must be addressed 
And, you know, that's that's what our goal is. So to get through the day, I need some cough drops and uh, candy and napkins and reminders and just get through a whole lot of stuff. And anyway, I'm kind of stumbling now because I'm thinking so much about um, things that go on and and um and I mean positive too. Sometimes when we talk about the difficulties of church from pastoral, it's talking about the negatives, but I I'll be honest with you, there is far, far more godliness going on than any other things. Of course, that's the women's bathroom and the men's bathroom. It's just two bathrooms. They actually were built to be the same. So one has nothing in it that the other one does not have. So, uh, let's go downstairs. Now, I'm recording this with the idea of giving you an overview. And for those who are members, you would have seen it so many times that uh, you can easily uh, get disinterested. But the target is new members. We also have the lower compartment here. Um, all of these under the stairway... There's some some of the masks, uh, blank tapes. We've thrown away a lot of decorations that was Woman's Day and Fall Fest and all of this. But if we aren't careful, this could easily become a kind of a junk pile. It hasn't yet because a lot of mine, when I was taping, uh, doing cassettes, a ton of them are up under there too. But we always have to watch that space. Uh, this wall... Represents a play that we did last year for um, Black History. We've gotten community service awards. Uh, we've been very involved in the community and uh, parenting programs and, I mean, basketball. And, I mean, we just have just had a lot that we have uh, done. And we've had a few members that have died and the other plaque is being updated uh, to include those. So when you come back through here, you will likely see very soon that there are plaques there that include those who have died recently. Uh, at this point, the women's bathroom, men's bathroom, and uh, high school class um, uh, so middle school classrooms so you can see that down here we have uh, there's a lot of church down here and there's a lot that uh, that you can avail yourself of we put in this room it's been in our plan since day one, but it actually just got really implemented this way as a prayer and reflection room. There are times you may come in and you just don't have it together. In fact, every time you come in, you probably don't have it together. I don't think most of us do, whatever that means, because it's just not part of our tradition. But this is where sometimes you can just come and just sit. It's not designed to be a place where you sit and work out things because if somebody else is coming, they can't use it if you're and being silent if you are there and you're talking. But it, it can happen, but it's designed originally for the individual. Children's Church, ages two to three. Children's Church and Wednesday night class. Uh, children, ages four to five. And then we go, and that's, that's two rooms here. And then we go into our fellowship area. Um, children's church, ages six to second grade, and on Wednesday night, first to fourth grade. Now that was done uh, pre-pandemic. And there are some adjustments that we've had to make. But in our uh, general uh, fellowship hall, that's what we do here. We have the opportunity to have the Wednesday night Bible class. We had a, 
a class beyond description uh, this past, uh, last night, this past Wednesday night, we talked about the sunrise service and we talked about not only the sunrise service, but the impact that it had on daily lives. And when we address everything in life based on what the word of God says, then we have the capacity to become the desire to become and the, the church is strengthened and we're becoming one and we become bold and we become strong and we can defeat Satan in the individual lives and what he tries to bring to the church. But everything is based on the word of God. And with that in mind, you have to learn the word of God. So we're going to challenge you as a new member to be devoted and learn and let us teach you how to be devoted to the word of God. That's why you come to classes and we're, we're, we're keeping it real, people. So we ain't playing games. We're telling you and we're sharing with you and we're listening to you. What does the word of God say? Our doctrine is Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. He's risen from the dead. But we also know that the Holy Spirit has led Paul in the books that he's written. And so we dig all of that because that's where life actually is. Now, every time you get to a place for the first time, nobody knows you. You don't know them. What we do know is that you have an opportunity to grow, to transform, and to change. Take your time getting to know people. Don't decide very early on that somebody is something one way or the other. Just take your time. Speak to people. Look for an opportunity to get to know them. We always try to encourage the members. Hug you if you want to be hugged. Uh, shake your hand if you want to shake your hand. And for those who come in with children, we want to be especially, especially careful about how we approach you because we don't know your children or your child. We don't know. Sometimes we don't know the mother and father. Uh, we only know the person who is there and they have family. So we don't want to cross anybody's line by getting overly involved in anybody's life until we get to know you. Even then, we don't be overly involved, but we want everybody to be comfortable with who we are as a church and who we are as a people. And we do have a tendency to be friendly, to be compassionate. But I always have to remind the people that uh, from a pastoral side, give people a break. Shake hands if they want to shake hands, hug if they want to. But also remember that you are uh, getting to know each other. So always give each other the space to get to know each other and to grow and to have the opportunities uh, that God would have us to be one church. To, one, to be one people. So over the next um, few weeks, you're going to get a copy of our policy manual. Uh, you'll get more videos and you'll be hearing from me. But more than anything, I want to say to you, welcome to South Central Church of Christ. We are a flawed, fallible people, but we are saved by the perfection of Christ Jesus. And our heart's desire is to serve him. And so everything that goes on with you, it's all a part of that process. You're going to learn the ministries. You'll learn the songs and learn all the things that we do. Some are traditional. Some of them are the things that we are learning innovatively. But whatever happens, it's us. We don't have you down as an enemy because you're new. We want to learn with you and from you and want you to learn from us. So I say this to you. Welcome to our South Central Church of Christ. If you've been here 40 years and you are looking at this video you're doing what I would hope all of the members would do. So we can always stay on one chord, one accord. God bless you. You'll be hearing from the rest of the church in many ways over the days that are here. Pastor Michael L. Dublin, Sr., South Central Church of Christ, 2010 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27610. Always keep us in mind in everything that you are and always and everything that you do. God bless you.